Hi folks, and welcome back to the channel. I wasn't are... expecting it to be started, I'm so sorry. Well, we're started now, Jess, <laughs> we've started. So today we're doing a garden tour. The dinner is on, the dinner is cooking. So we're in a little bit of a rush, but we spent the day yeah. frozen. Why am I frozen? <laughs> garden, doing stuff in the garden. Yeah, we spent the day, it's... I was trying to think of what day it is. Sunday. Sunday, it's a lovely Sunday where we are. <laughs> and we've been doing some stuff in the garden, so you've also been saying the tulips are in danger. The tulips are in danger of going over and you haven't yet seen the tulips. And so we've like, got to do the garden They're my tour. thing this year. But so we're going to start in here because Jess has scores of seedlings. I was about to show you the seedlings, but we do need to talk about what Jess has said. The wall <laughs> is in the shot. And this wall is so damp. We have no idea where the water is coming from. There used to be a, uh, a, a ca cabinet yeah. on the wall and it got so wet that the screws just, <laughs> the whole thing fell off. Actually landed on the seedlings, It did didn't land it? on my seedlings, which is not why they look quite this bad, but it's fine, they're gonna bounce back. <laughs> they haven't seen them yet. Jess is saying they look bad because they're just looking a little sad, but I think probably just a bit from um, the yeah. wind today. They need a little bit more water, which I'll give them after this, and they have been hardening off, um, and the wind was just battering everything today and I was like, oh, they'll be fine. So we'll see. I've got a lot of ranunculuses. This is, there's one tray, some of them are already out and there's another tray. So if some of them croak, that's fine. Is this all ranunculus, this entire tray? These ones, yeah. Oh, there's stuff behind. Yeah, there's some antirhinums that are actually doing really, really well. These ones. Uh, these I got from the garden centre, like I didn't find those. Um, this is JB's to overwintered tomato. Yeah, it's not looking too happy, but I've just repotted it today, so it might come back. Might be fine. These are something called like Cerinthes, Cerinthes maybe? Mm, let me get in there, let me get in there. <laughs> and Cosmos. Beep, 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 beep. Jess has also <laughs> just bought this. <laughs> she can't resist. This is an Aldi purchase, isn't it? It is. No, look at it... my socks. <laughs> oh no! Look at my socks! Get this. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is also missing a piece, so we need to contact Aldi and be like, um, excuse us. Excuse me. Can we have some money back, please? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> it also I doesn't also really from, fit together. Oh, no, I didn't get this from Aldi. Oh, okay, yeah. what's next? What's next from there? Um, these... Are we starting at the bottom or the top? Where am I going? The bot. Well, no, not the bottom, because I, I think these are all straw flowers. Oh, really? Is this the mm. straw flowers? Where's the label, Jessica? <laughs> the, they, I had to move the label so I could get this, the seed tray on. Hang on. <laughs> They are. Wow, that's a, that is some bad. Yeah, wait, wait for it. Jess will absolutely. The camera can't even focus on it because it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't know what it's looking at. Jess will never go to the trouble of finding a sharpie, despite there being not. like twenty in the drawer. Straw flowers, a pansy apparently, and some sweet Williams in there. Um, I don't think that's what's in the seed tray. I, I think they're just labels in here, aren't they? No. You think that's what's in there? Yeah, because they're all in the same pen. They all look like the exact same flower in here. You're incorrect, so. I'm not incorrect, <laughs> they look the same. <laughs> they do. I, something didn't germinate. Probably the pansies. They've never germinated for me. Okay, well, we've got a nice mystery tray there. This one's it's like... It's not a mystery tray, I just told you what okay, was in well, it. well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. This, this one's half one, empty. Yeah, listen. I... The, the gnats. I... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you're raising, I'm raising the camera up and Jess is getting it taller and taller. I sowed these seeds back when I sowed the antirhinums and everything like... Like straight at the mid beginning of January. Yeah, in January. And then I just, I kind of forgot they existed. <laughs> so we're just gonna... They're looking healthy though. Yeah, they but they're okay? so tiny. Dianthus and Flock, so... We can mm, read those ones, don't worry, Jess. We can read those. <laughs> That'll be all. Uh, There's a few sad looking chilies up here. Um, these are ones sown 6th of Jan. I've kept them down here as a useful Comparison. One lupin. Look at this lupin. Oh yeah, that's my one surviving lupin. Oh no, why does it look so sad? <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about this on point. Oh, it's so light. Yeah, that one just probably needs water, but all of the lupins pretty much, apart from this one, have died. And I was so smug about it as well. Mm. When they first germinated, I was like, everyone says these there are, are so hard. There are so many fungus nuts flying around your head. I was like, these are so hard, but look how many I've got. And then I put them up and they literally all died. What's this one? In these massive, absolutely <laughs> massive cells. These are, oh, what are they called? Am Amaranthus? <laughs> another, no, I know another. what it says. I don't know how to pronounce it. Okay. Amaranthus. They're like, I think they're tall and they're really like trailing little red flowers. Okay, sounds cute. And zinnias. We all love and zinnias. And zinnias. 
You say these sound cute, but you do not like them. We haven't. It, like, it's been like six minutes, and we've not even left the conservatory oh, yeah, so yet. Sorry. Sweet peas, absolute jungle. Look, I saw. Look at this one. Yeah, that is quite tall, isn't it? Yeah, but I planted some out like three weeks ago, and they don't look like they're love and life. There was, I think, not last year, the year before. I left them, and they got so so leggy, and you were like, "Do not put them out." And I put them out, and it was like the best. These so have actually really haven't these been trimmed? Didn't I trim these? Uh, maybe the ones at the front, like the bushier ones. I'm pretty sure I trimmed them all without telling you because they were getting so leggy. But look at them now. Still leggy. I missed Jess's reaction there. Do that again. <laughs> <laughs> and then more ranunculus, obviously. Should we go outside? There have been a few aphid problems in the conservatory. This is so, the, the pitiful amount of stuff I put it up today. One thing we do have to mention, just straight off the bat, the new arch. This hasn't <gasps> been on the channel arch, properly. Yeah, so um, it's getting a little bit sun glare there, but I think the arch and the raised beds have done quite dramatic things, as have the tulips for the garden. Look at them all, my babies. Right, where do you want to start? Should we start at the pots? Yeah. Over here. Well, yeah, but let's ignore all of oh, this. Oh wait, you did all this earlier? Yeah, but they're the same, yeah. ranunculus. Oh, the carnation, oh, the carnations. Yeah, so this mm. one, these might want to go back in the conservatory maybe for a little while. I don't, I don't know. I don't think that's what they're meant to look like. No, I don't think that's what. I don't think they've ever done well. We'll see, we'll see. I think see. they can gonna... go out with the, like, the heat. I think it's fine. I just don't think they're going to do anything that I want them to do. They got very leggy, didn't they? So yeah, they really did. Carnations, ranunculus. Uh, these are anti-rhinums. These, these have been really good. This was already in here. I don't know what this is. I just didn't take it out. Oh. I think. Answers in the comments below, please, <laughs> folks. These were all done from seed though, weren't they? Yes. Um, ranunculus were done from bulbs that you planted. Carnation from seed. From seed. So pretty good. This and is an old anemone, isn't it? That's an old anemone and I've just planted some bulbs that I found under the um, fuchsia <laughs> that I was meant to plant like four months ago. And they are called some Isla's? Lisa's? Don't know. Did you set a timer on the oven? No, they're fine though. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we skip this. Nothing skip new. Skip it. Nothing new here. Okay, quick then. Sweet pea, <laughs> little sweet pea gift box. Sunflower gift box, very cute. I'm waiting for the ambulance to go past. Sunflower gift box, they like came in a set. Roses? Roses, this one's got a bud. Yeah. See it, see it? Ooh. Gorgeous. Uh, these ones don't. What, what colours are these? Do you know the varieties? They're all David Austin, I know They're that. all David Austin. They're all expensive. Oh, look at that. I bought them myself, you can't say nothing. Is this rose uh, diseased? Is it all gonna die? Not, if it is Jess's rose garden diseased, hopes. They're gonna, they'll refund it, so it's fine. Well, that is true, isn't it? That's why I always buy David Austin. Somewhere. Oxide daisies, he's very cute. I think they self-seeded. Yeah, I, th I don't think you planted those. I think they've self-seeded. Hellebore? Yeah, I bought that reduced at the garden center. Nice. Well, obviously, look at it, but it was really cheap, so I bought it. We've got to look at them. We've got to look at the tulips. This little area by, you can be in that shot, don't worry Jess. Um, this has been a bit of like trouble for us. Do you, do you want to be on the camera? You okay? Yeah, I'm trying, oh no, the light. Oh, you can't see me over here. It's just, it's difficult in the sunshine. Okay, all I'm trying to say, this has been a problem for a long time and this year Jess has cracked it. We've got the massive showing of bulbs. These are hyacinths. Great hyacinths. That Very cute. I planted on purpose for the colors because I think they're super, super cute. Um, and there's some wild tulips at the back, which lasted maybe four days, and I'm going to move them. And that's why I haven't deadheaded them yet, because I'm going to move them out of there, because they're too small and they get swallowed up. They're all pretty. What are your favourite tulips this season? Oh! There's some, the, that basket is really nice. Yeah, basket. that's the, like, the bulb lasagna. That Niles Gardens, is that, isn't, that isn't the channel name? Well, he's only got one garden. No, Nile Garden. What else is meant to be in the lasagna? Uh, so, Crocus came up already, and there's, I think there's some freesias in there, but they might be getting lost, like these. I think these are freesias, and they haven't come out yet. Um, Cute. But these grew, I don't think I was meant to use these tulips, like these are massive. I like it though. I do like it, I just didn't, I wasn't expecting them to get that tall. But my favourite ones were these white ones, but they were like a pale pastel yellow, like four days ago. And they were so, so pretty, and I like the pink and the purple ones together too. Like I these think... little overly, Flowery, blousy ones are so pretty. I wasn't expecting it, but these ones have definitely been my favorite. I think possibly just because of the way that they've been planted so densely mm. together, they're really nice, very cute. Oh, Jess is really happy with this one. This is one that she rescued yes. from a garden center the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you can, oh, that really pretty purple flower's gone like, to sleep. 
So you oh no! Through, you can't show them it. Yeah. <laughs> Down there, there's a little wild geranium-looking thing, and it's all closed up. If anyone knows what this one is, let us know. It was absolutely gorgeous in the daylight. It's all yeah. open. Also, my Philadelphia's just coming back. Oh yes. I really, really did think I'd killed that. It really did look very dead. It didn't did it? look very dead. But next kind of bit of structure. We're still working on the beds, aren't we? Yeah. I think they're still looking a little bit like a blank slate because this is the first season that we've actually got them to grow in. If you don't know, if you're kind of new to the channel, these were put together September, October time. Yeah. Filled, these two big ones were done in kind of a Hugel culture style. So loads of um, browns underneath and then filled with um, topsoil. And then we've done a bit of manure mulch on the top and it has sunk down so much already, but um, we'll build it up over time. But we have just today really been out here planting probably the mm. majority of the first stuff out. My peonies come back. Look how well it's doing. <laughs> <laughs> this one is, so w the, the main weeds that we have in the garden. Um, do you know, we had that, that sedge and I've not seen that recently. What sedge? I don't know. It what was that's... like an invasive grass thing. That might be a bit later in the season, but that's good. We get bindweed that comes in from next door and we have celandine that mm. is rampant. <laughs> Absolutely, hilarious. yes. In the bulbs, you can really see it. I personally don't mind it. It's a really pretty flower, but mm. it, it can really quickly take over. And on this bed in particular, once it goes over, it just looks a bit gra gross and a bit ratty. So we've got a bit no dig on here. This has had the sludge. The sludge. <laughs> the sludge. <laughs> I'm gonna blame Jess for this one. Jess has a bit of a habit of making up a potting mix putting it in a big truck. I didn't no make drainage. it up. I just took it outside. Okay. Taking my carefully assembled potting mix with all the right ingredients mm. and then dumping it outside just before it's about to rain. And then I don't realize it's gone until like three weeks later and the whole thing is just full of water. So we had a lot of silver <laughs> grow sludge, the most expensive sludge you can get. And uh, that has now <laughs> been drained, <laughs> drained out onto the beds. A little bit of a top up and it has dried up. It's quite nice actually. I was expecting it to go really gross, but um, yeah, we've mulched the bed with some of it. I just, I just had to get that little, get that little moaning. <laughs> these tulips are absolutely gigantic, aren't they? And look at these funky little daffodils as well. Really quite cool, really roughly. Um, we've got like a little bit of ground in between each of the beds that we can plant into, but there's a lot of things that Jess is growing for the first time this year. So we're not 100% on like garden planning and yeah. knowing exactly where everything is going to go until it just goes out. Yeah. And then you were saying earlier. I'm probably going to move to tulips elsewhere. Not what I thought you were going to talk oh. about. A lot probably of the things, um, you're just going to see what the flower looks like, mm -hmm. get an impression of its height, how it looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then plan a little bit more next year. Yeah, the plan for next year is more structure, heights. Mm. Next bed is a little bit, once again, like a blank slate. All of these little wallflowers have done quite well. These were planted October? Yeah, October. It was like just after we got the beds and we were like, let's stick something in. And they've all survived over winter. Taking that Anti-cat defense there, a little bit of rose, <laughs> rose stem. This I planted earlier, I've hopefully got a picture. The most root bound thing I have seen in my entire life. What I is that one, Jess? I think we saved that from the garden center as well. It's a sweet William. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we've got the hazel trees. Yes. Hazel trees. And there's one over there with the daffodil in it. So um, just the three hazel trees for us. We'll, we'll do a little scoop round and we'll come to the hazel tree that I've planted because it's quite exciting. <laughs> there was like some nice early tulips in there. What's this one? What's this is that? something. This has a red flower, right? PH Phil Philendrodon or something. What? It's like a lily of some kind. Is it? Yeah, it was massive last year. Was it? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Struggling to remember that one. It's probably on one of the videos. I, I don't know the leaves. I don't know what it is though. The sweet pea frame, obviously Looking quite fabulous. bare at the moment. Um, we were thinking that it would be nice to have something with a bit more cover. You can be in the shot. You don't, you don't need to be shy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's looking a bit bare. We were thinking maybe it would be nice to get something evergreen to mm. get on this, as well as the sweet peas, obviously in summer. These sweet peas went out beginning of April. I kept saying, Jess, just, just bloody put some out, see, see how they do. And they've not done much, to be honest. They, they are haven't looking, died. They haven't died, that's for sure. They're looking a bit sad though, but oh, um, yeah. there are loads, as you've just seen in the conservatory, ready to go out in maybe a week. We'll see, we'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. This is absolutely adorable, but all of the forget-me-nots and the nigella, love in the mist. 
the, forget, this honestly, the forget me nots are the best thing I ever grew. This bed is just crazy. The amount of nigella in here, really, really cool. And you planted the cosmos? The cosmos? Am I one surviving oh, yeah. lupin? I did just put in a, a couple of little cosmos. There's quite a lot that we've got in terms of seedlings. So just chuck in a few out in the ground, see how they do. And I think at the back of the garden, this will look really nice. The one surviving <laughs> lupin. <laughs> well, that. actually that's two. There's one outside and one inside. <laughs> Yeah. Two, and I had, what, like 24? Yeah. Well, um, not the best survival Shrek. rate. Jess hasn't sowed any more, though. This is one thing that we're trying to impart into Jess. There's a, a bit of a new gardener, the newer, the newer of the two gardeners mm. here in front of you, that um, if something goes wrong, not to get disheartened and just sow some more. Yeah, and I do, I do get that, I do get that. But also, the packets are like, start them in January. It's April now. I'm going to do it anyway. I bought a little cute uh, windowsill. Oh, is that for Trading. the lupins? Well, I just, I got it because it was there and it was cute. But I will put the lupins in it and I'm going to soak them as one of your lovely commenters top mm. two. You going to do that today, Jess? Yes. Are oh, you? Yeah. I'll soak them today. Okay. I'll plant them tomorrow. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> this is a work in progress. We're going to sort all this out. We just yeah. haven't done it yet. This is big work in progress area. That cold frame didn't really work. That plastic just ripped immediately. And I am thinking it's probably going to do better at the allotment. Yeah. Um, I would like someone to tell me what this is, please, oh. if you know what this is. Do you reckon we planted it, or...? Um, I don't know, like, it's got some funky leaves. I don't that looks like it might it. be about to flower, right? Is that just new growth? I don't know. Don't know. Don't know, JP, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> A few acrolegia, they just seem to self-seed absolutely everywhere. Some more successful peonies, they're coming back. Yeah, I know. This is very exciting though. We've got down here the Bleeding Heart, which we must admit is a garden centre purchase. This was quite well established when we bought it, but we had one of these last year and we actually put it in the shady border over there. We'll oh, return yeah. to that one um, very briefly. And <laughs> <laughs> it didn't survive winter. So we're hoping this one will establish, but just behind that, we've got what is it, Jess? It's a cherry blossom tree. <laughs> I've always, I've always wanted one, and it's just never been something we ever bought because we used to have the broom here, like this big yellow bush yeah. thing, and it really, really just died. It did. Um, so we took it out, and I got a garden voucher. I was like, well, now's the time. Now is the time. I love this one. It's got this super dark leaves, which are really, really cool, and then obviously the blossom flowers. But I'm quite a big fan of this one. Do you want, do you want to show them that? The... Oh yeah. Look at them, the blue ones. Oh, Jess has just said, look down here, this is really cute. We didn't even grow these. I don't know where they've come from, but really, really sweet little um, blue forget-me-nots under this currant bush, which um, is one for the allotment growers. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of red currants, so we've just kind of left this, but the blackbirds do really like it. Every year it gets full of aphids and like galls and that kind of thing, um, but really good for the wildlife. And the honeysuckle is doing very well too. I had to bodge some repairs on this <laughs> because it absolutely got smashed apart by the wind the other day, but it's just about holding. If you don't look too closely, then you can't, yeah, can't really notice. Fine. Salvia, one of our favorites, waiting for that to come into flower. No, kind of chilling out on the no mow this year at someone's request. We have, well, we have some mowed paths, but this is still very no mow. This is quite no mo, but you can see, this was the bit that we always left absolutely longest yeah. and you can see, well, you might not be able to see, but I can tell you, it's got the, <laughs> the most diversity in the lawn. Um, obviously we've got the dandelions and the daisies this time of year. There's a few things that I don't really want in here um, as well, but it's really nice to see lots more little things like flies and especially spiders. I saw some really cool spiders in here earlier. Um, so we're going to be keeping this much more maintained this year, but still a little bit wild. And ideally, it would be nice to plant a few things in here. Mm. Yeah, I got the, uh, what are they? The wooden enemy things? And the crocus I really want to plant in the yeah. lawn once the peach has gone. The shady border, um, long time subscribers might not, don't look at the fence. Look, we've got to paint <laughs> that fence. Um, they came down in the storm the other day. The shady border, I did a specific video on layering this with loads of bulbs and snowdrops and winter <laughs> aconites. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Absolutely, not one of them came up. Um, I did loads of woodland wildflower mix. Not all one of them came up, but we do have one thing which Jess has saved the day with, which are all of these. Foxgloves, grown from seed all by myself. Yeah, these were all last year, right? Uh, we only had this one last year. Well, like this one in the ground, but I mean, yeah, I grew them from the... seed last year, yeah. Yeah. 
So, you know, there's something here as well. Um, there's a little primrose down here, but this one I think might have come up from this, the wildflower seeds. I'm not sure. Um, but it's nice to have a little bit of a wild area. It's really good for all the frogs. Um, we've got lots of frogs, lots of frogs in the pond, and it's nice to keep a little area for them here. Now, this is just, <laughs> Jess has just done this. What have you planted, Jess? I've planted clematis. Two, well, I think they're the same type, they're just two different colours. Um, but they're 5 dollars in Aldi if you want to get them. <laughs> I mean, I think they're massive. Like, I think it's a really good deal. So, Aldi if you do want them. Um, but yeah, I think they're going to look really cute. And on the other side, we're probably going to put a rose. I'll figure out if I've already got a, like a rose that will grow up, basically. But for now, it's clematis side and a few things that I've sown myself to see what happens, basically. So hopefully the rose is going to trail, trail mm. up the, the arch. What have we got in this bed, Jess? What is this? What, I actually don't know what this I is. I don't know what that is. Oh, that you could, don't know either? That could be anything. What, is that, I is thought that you label? Planted. Oh, mm, <laughs> don't know is what it is. Not? Oh, is it? Well, it's quite a big label. I mean, maybe. It doesn't look like an anemone at oh, all, does it? Oh, these are actually pansies. I don't think they are pansies. One thing to update on. Jess did a bit of, um, <laughs> you know, milk, milk bottles bottle, saying yeah, that Audrey is always talking about it in there. I did it wrong. Yeah, not, not. Said absolutely no thank you. Not one of our finest moments. Mm -hmm. Forget me not so absolutely amazing. If I love want, them so much. If you want a lot of forget me nots, you just got to plant 300 seeds all at once <laughs> and then throw them in the bed and hope for the best. <laughs> this little cosh we're trying out. This was a few quid in the garden centre. Um, just thought it would be nice. We got this a few weeks ago when yeah. there were still lots of cold nights. Um, doesn't really seem to have made a difference, to be honest, but hopefully. I actually we'll think it's killing it, off so. my ranculus, but we're ju we've got so many, we're just trialing it out. These are dianthus, right? There's something in there. Yeah, this is dianthus, that's dianthus, and this is dianthus. Oh, I'm wow, this sure. is a dianthus bed then. Yeah. We planted these ones last year, and this one I saved in the garden centre. This bed is looking really nice. This has had loads planted into it today. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually lobelias. So, this is an entire seed tray of lobelias, basically. Yeah, don't sow lobelias in one single seed tray. Yeah. You need modules. Yeah. Or uh, you end up with this. Or but just remember to split them very early. Can you just show them this, please? This is a geranium that I successfully overwintered. Yes. This is a weird one. Uh, no idea. That's like six different things. Yeah, loads of, loads, loads of stuff. No idea. Um, some more ranunculus, nigella, uh, aquilegia. What are these ones? Antirhinums? Antirhinums, antirhinums, antirhinums. So this is a, a fuchsia that, Ooh. again, I bought from the garden centre. You know, like the little teeny ones? Mm. I got eight for ten pounds and they're going to be trailing because I thought they would look super cute going up and over. I think this is white. Might be pink, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Sweet. And then finally, the pond, which everything has just started to come back into life. We've not actually, I didn't see any frog spawn this year, but we did just see a tiny little baby frog earlier, which is just the cutest <laughs> thing ever. These marsh marigold though, are oh, just fantastic. I spent about 10 minutes earlier just shooting photos and videos of these. They look absolutely wonderful. And the star of the show last year, which I was really worried about, was the purple loosestrife. That's what this little thing is for, this little support. And oh, it just towered into the garden. It was full of insects all year long. And it's just starting to come back. It's just, just starting. The pond is looking maybe a little bit sludgy. So the main thing I grew in here was hornwort, which is meant to be a really good oxygenator. There's a few other little bits and bobs. There's a forget-me-not that I think might be coming back and water mint as well. And I think this might have been some kind of lily and I'm not sure if that's coming back or not. But it does look a little bit sludgy and I'm not seeing masses of insect life. So I'm getting a little bit worried about pond management, but we'll get there. Oh, and the, uh, oh, there's a massive hole back here, Jess. <laughs> yeah, you started to plant the snowdrops and then said, that's too big, I'm not doing it. Well, that is true. But <laughs> the thing I wanted to show you was this tiny, tiny little hazel tree. You can see it's arguing with the celandine and the ivy. But this was given to me by a work colleague and I've always wanted a little, a little bit more structure in the garden and a tree that wasn't going to completely take over. Come on, focus on me, please. Focus <laughs> on me. But yes, that area over there with the fuchsia, which always looks a bit weird, doesn't it? It's very yeah. yellow. But it does come back and it does flower and it does do its thing. But a little bit more structure there, especially, I think would be really nice. So hopefully, there is a holly tree down there growing very, very slowly, but hopefully at a hazel, perfect kind of understory tree. Mm -hmm. 
A little bit of structure. Little something bit of structure. for the birds. Something for the birds. We'll see. But the garden is really starting to come together. This year it feels so, so nice. And all of the spring flowers and all the work yeah. you've put in is um, it's really, really pleasant. So thank you for joining us on this little garden tour. Thank you. <laughs> and an extra special thank you to all of my Chili Peppeteer patrons, Tony, Bill, Pam, Louise, Mel, Michael, Denise, Socks in the Garden, Andrew, Sarah, and... Oh, did you see this? Angela, I think it's Angela. I, I said Andrea. Very sorry. And Dorcasaw as well. Hopefully we'll see you again in the next one.